Hey traders and investors, today is December 12th. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth. It is Saturday. Hope everyone is having a great weekend thus far. So to, in today's video, we're going to take a look at Estee Lauder. I had a couple of requests come through from the community and one of the tickers that was requested was Estee Lauder, so EL ticker symbol. So we'll take a look at this. We'll discuss whether or not now is a good time to start getting involved and investing in the company. If you're looking to potentially take some profits, I'll give some levels on those. And I'll also give some entry levels if you are interested in going long the stock. So first thing, first thing on the list here, uh, first and foremost, their earnings were out in November. So it came out at the first of, or second of November and they absolutely destroyed the earnings. They came in with a 58% surprise. So the estimate was 90 for EPS and it came in at 1.42. So that was a surprise of 52 cents. So that was a huge beat. So congrats to the EL Bulls who played that earnings reaction. But just taking a look here at the monthly chart, you can see we are monthly overbought from the March lows. So from the monthly run that we've been on, we have a higher low every single month, meaning the price has not pulled back or consolidated on the monthly time frame. Each candle, we have a higher low, which means that when we do pull back and consolidate on monthly consolidation, we could see a significant drop perhaps to EMA 12 or EMA 26 period on the monthly time frame. So that would put us around the 189 or the 212 level. So if we do start to pull back, that's some levels that we could expect. So if you are looking to go long and you're a very patient bull, maybe you're waiting to get in on one of those tests and a monthly higher low. We also have a monthly inside bar on watch. So if we break the inside bar bullish, so if we break say the high of 259.77, do you wanna enter then? Or if we break bearish of 220.42, are you gonna be scouting for monthly higher lows and entering on an EMA 12 test? These are all things you need to determine. And if you're a bull and you're in a position already, maybe you wanna start taking profits. Like I said, we haven't consolidated now since March, so we're going on nine months without any monthly consolidation. Nothing goes straight up forever. So taking a look at the weekly time frame, the weekly EMAs have been great support, a nice visual guide. So from the low here of 137 back in March, we had the low, the high, higher low here. We had a higher low established at 158.25. And then when we broke the high of 179.86, that confirmed a weekly uptrend. So if you missed your entry here at 137, you could have waited for that bounce to top out on the weekly, which happened right around EMA 12. And once we failed to close above that, you could have expected a potential higher low here on this weekly inside bar bull, uh, bear break. So we broke that inside bar on the weekly bear, set a weekly higher low into a higher high, changed the weekly trend, established another higher low here on the weekly at 183.22. And again, that EMA 12 and 26 period, has been a great visual support guide. And if you would have entered on that test, on the weekly high or low test, you would have been sitting comfortably here. Even with that high or low, you'd be up about 40% from the second weekly high or low. Then we had another weekly high or low here at 194.14 and another test of the EMAs. We held another weekly high or low. So we got a ton of support on the weekly. So if we do start to consolidate here in a meaningful way, we have tons of support levels on Estee Lauder. So if we draw one there, draw another one there, draw another one there, another one here, and another one there. So we've got essentially five support levels on the weekly time frame once we do start to consolidate. So lots of weekly support there. Taking a look at the daily time frame. So the daily, we're in a bit of a daily equilibrium. So we didn't have a daily high or low in quite some time after the earnings reaction. It was just all bulls. So we did pull back on the daily. Again, we're testing EMA 26 on the daily and we're looking for a daily higher low. So we had the low, the high after the earnings reaction, higher low, lower high, higher low, lower high. We're essentially in a tightening range and equilibrium pattern. So if we break above 250.85, maybe you want to enter and set a stop below 
say 237.62, or maybe you want to try and get it as close to 237.62 and set your stop just below there. I mean, we could, if we lose that support level, we could easily drop 10%. So keep in mind that stocks that run this hard, especially from, you know, nine months ago back in March and after a huge earnings reaction, you need to start to watch out for profit taking. But personally, I'd be avoiding any long-term entries at this point. I would want to wait for at least another weekly higher low or a monthly higher low at this point. Weekly RSI is not overbought anymore at this time. Like I said, monthly is overbought. Weekly is not, daily is not. So it is cooling down the RSIs on the weekly and the daily time frame. But like I said, on the week, I'd be wanting to at least see how we break this inside bar. So we have a weekly inside bar currently forming. So most important resistance going into Monday is going to be 249.32 and the low of 242.01. After that, we have 250.85 for resistance and 240.25 for support. We also have EMA 12 there at 234.88 and EMA 26 at 221.36. So that's what I'd be waiting for if I was a bull looking to enter this position, enter a position on this ticker. I'd be waiting for at least, you know, some, some weekly consolidation, some significant weekly consolidation, maybe a test of EMA 26 or the 12 period exponential moving average. So that's where I stand. That's where we stand on this ticker. So hopefully this information was valuable. I'll just bring up the weekly time frame here as well to see as it was the end of the week last week. Again, weekly inside bar on watch. We did close above the 10 week moving average. The stochastic is cross bearish and the MACD is potentially looking to cross bearish as well. But we are essentially two for three. We are above the 10 week moving average. Stochastic is trying to cross bullish again, but it is bearish. So two out of three macro indicators are showing a little bit of warnings here with the stochastic, but if we can get that stochastic next week cross bullish again, then the long-term outlook for EL will be very, very positive. Taking a look at the weekly moving averages, we're well above the 5,100 and the 200 weekly moving average. The MACD again is still trending up and everything looking good here. But again, I'd be wanting to enter on some significant weekly consolidation if it were my money going into the stock and if I was looking to hold long-term EL on the daily time frame, so we are well above the 5100 and the 200 daily moving average. The MACD is trending lower, so that's notable. And maybe you want to enter on a 50-day moving average test. So maybe we're at 245 now. We have the 50-day moving average, which takes the price over the last 50 days and divides it by 50. So it takes the sum of those 50 trading days and divides it by 50 and we're left with 235.77. So if we go by that number there, a potential test of the 50-day moving average would be a decent entry. Again, there's a lot of different ways you could play this. You could scale into this ticker. You could buy a little bit here. Let's say if we break this daily EQ bear, maybe you buy a little bit there. Maybe you scale in another order at the 235s and maybe another order in the 220s. You could scale in in a few orders, maybe scale in one at 235, one at 222, and one at 200 if we get there. So again, it's really going to dictate what SPY is doing. And SPY being the S&P 500 and the overall, the overall broader market. So you can see we're, we're consolidating on the daily on SPY. We need to change the hourly trend though to be confident that the daily higher low is set. And then we'll look up to the recent all-time highs and a higher high. But until we do that, until we change the hourly trend, the overall market is going to be at risk. And SPY on the weekly time frame hasn't consolidated in a very long time either. So maybe you want to wait to enter EL for a weekly consolidation on SPY. We know it's overdue. We know it's going to come at some point. So why not, you know, take advantage of that pullback and that will likely, in, you know, it'll likely affect individual stocks, including EL as well. So Maybe you want to wait for some significant weekly consolidation before you enter on EL. These are all things that you need to determine. You need to determine if you're going to set a stop loss, how much 
risk you're going to allocate, how much capital you're going to allocate, what is your stop loss, are you going to use a stop loss, are you going to use a stop limit or just a regular stop. These are all things you need to get clear on. And if there is something that you're unclear about or need assistance with, just let us know in the comments below. Hopefully you found this information valuable and you can apply it to your trading and entries and exit. So with that, thanks again for joining us on the pursuit of wealth for an Estee Lauder chart and stock review. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Again, it's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us on the pursuit of wealth and we'll see you on the next update.